Welcome back to the Real Little Report. Let's get right to it. Part two, the ugly. So, we have this uh, alleged assault on union officials. I'm out in the open. Why I'm out in the open? Because a lot of this story, conversations and whatnot, continued in a, a park. I happened to be in a park today. Didn't want to wear the construction helmet because I wound up throwing it off anyway. The noise you hear is planes. When you're outside, you might hear planes. Let's get into it. So, about a day or two go by, come back to the job, whatever. Went back to the job the next day, all is quiet. Turns out, behind closed doors, the owner of the company that's in debt for the 300000 in benefits that he owes, I think it was three fifty. the number, not sure, it was in that area. Uh, the union, president of the union, I'll say his name, the punk, Anthony Silveri, who winds up getting moving up to Boston anyway, punk, um, behind our back is selling us out. Now, he represents us. Until the facts are out, he's supposed to represent us. He's telling the owner of the company, you fire these two guys that did this to the two business agents, allegedly, your benefit problem will go away. I won't shut the job down. You don't fire them, your benefit problem won't go away, and we will shut the job down. Now, remember, we got two guys on the job that we're supposed to uh, be part of their team. Um, one's running the job, other guy's a steward. Um, obviously, the decision's made. Me and my partner, Joey T, got to go. They lay us off. So you could imagine that didn't end quietly that day. A, the gentleman uh, that was running the job showed his true colors when the shit hit the fan. Honestly, not 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 because it's just me acting a tough guy. I would have said, cool, we'll close the fucking job down. Close it down. Because those two guys ain't going nowhere. Acting on uh, basically uh, being team players and, and asking what was asked of them. Long story short, we go, we get laid off. About three days after that, uh, and the owner, I wanted to get at the owner. Long story short, I don't remember his uh, the name of his company. Otherwise, I'd blow them the fuck up, too. I care less about them. They were mutts anyway. They go on the mutt list. No different than a rat. A mutt and a rat list. Anyway, so the guy that ran the job mutt, the owner of the job mutt, because I'll explain over time. Now, one day did that guy ever reach out to see if our families were okay, if he could do anything, put us on another job. Whatever. Long story short. So about three, four days after we were off the job, uh, my friend Joey calls me. He says, hey, did you get a phone call from somebody from the International? No. Long story short, now the International is starting to call us. How they get our numbers, whatever. I have no idea. I'm sure they were given to them. It's on file anyway, but I'm sure, as we you'll find out in the story, there were people that were cooperating about behind the scenes and telling stories behind the scenes of what happened, how things played out on the job site and whatnot. So cut to it. About a, two weeks maybe go by. I keep telling this guy that keeps calling me. I got nothing to say. Keep hanging up on him. About two weeks go by. I get a knock on my door. I think at that time I was living in a Yonkers. Um, I get a knock on my door and, uh, me and Joey are in constant contact. He's telling me they're breaking his balls. He's telling them to fuck themselves. Whatever. I get a knock on the door. Who is it? Guy flashes his international ID. What do you want from my door? What, what can I do for you? Just want to ask you a question. So me being sarcastic or wise ass, I make it like a, a I don't know, you could say a joke out of him. Or not a joke, but I'm being foolish in a way. But being a wise ass that I was. Uh, sarcastic, especially I'm, I'm aggravated. I'm really upset. 
at how this all transpired, being sold out and all of that. I tell him, uh, you got a badge? Do I need my lawyer? You know, being sarcastic. I said, you know what? I'm going to be a gentleman. Come on in. He sits down. He says to me, um, what if I could show you? First question, right? Well, first question out of the box was, is how did I get started in the labor union in 1985? So I tell him, we're off to a bad start already. What does that have to do with today? You know, I think that was 2003, I said, too. You know, in that area, 2003. More I go over, it is 2003, I believe. Uh, we're off to a bad start already. I'm basically, my wife is in the house. You know, I don't want to get too crazy. So I already told him he wasn't welcome in my house, but I'm letting him in, so be careful with the questions, because I told him the first question you asked me, that's out of the line you're going to leave the house. So first question is how they get in the union, 1985, blah, blah, blah. None of your business. Doesn't matter. It's not relative to what, what you're here for today. Why are you here today? I told him. Well, he says to me, what if I showed you um, a picture of an assault that occurred in a parking garage against two business agents that you and somebody else were involved in? What if I was to show you that picture? He says to me, I said to him, Probably verbatim, I would tell you you're full of shit, and that's not me in the picture you got, you're about to show me. In my mind, even if he showed me a picture of me, it wasn't me. Long story short, he plays this whole game, this whole routine, and he's going into his pocket, and he's digging, he's digging, and he pulls, he's getting ready to pull out the picture, he pulls out a picture, and the picture is a picture of my union ID, the picture I took that goes on your union ID, your union book. Um, I laughed at him hysterically. Then I got a little bit rude. Um, you want to hear the rudeness? I'll give it to you. I told him, now you got to get up, get up and get up out of my house. Simple as that. Call Joey T. Joey, anybody come and visit you? No. Nah. I told them to go after themselves. Bop, 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 bop. Um, this continues for a couple of weeks. We we definitely confirm that over the next few weeks that our general president, Mr. Anthony Silveri, who was moved to Boston, is really involved in a conflict of interest. The men he's supposed to be re representing, which is us, He's now cutting a deal with an owner who's behind on benefits, $350,000, and telling him your benefit problem will go away if you lay these two guys off, you know. So that's really a conflict right there until that whole thing plays out. Did it happen? Did it not happen? So long story short, oh, I guess about a month later, We'll both get letters in the mail that we have to appear at an international hearing in Manhattan, uh, New York City, for anybody, you know, Manhattan, anybody that might not know, Manhattan, New York City, just clarifying it so you know. Um, me and him being w where our states of mind were and will always probably be um, as far as that type of thing, uh, we uh, didn't show up, if anything, uh, if Joey ever watches this, he'll remember I told him I wanted to show up in a, a Barney, you know, the purple dinosaur. I wanted to go there in the dinosaur costume to make a joke out of them because that's how much respect I had for them. I didn't give a shit. And I was already, we were very upset already that they knew three quarters of the story and somebody was telling them certain things, some which were not true, some were, but they were getting information from somewhere. And two people that we... In tr well, one person that we, we 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 went to bat the whole nine yards for, the guy that ran the job, gave a fuck less. He cared less. He cared less. Never reached out, never made a phone call when this all played out. Sorry to hear. Don't worry. It's going to work out. Nothing. Just a respectful phone call. You know what I mean? Nobody needs your sorries. Because when you do something, you do it. That's it. So, I uh, think a ruling came down that me and Joe... Um, are officially suspended from all union activity. 
we can no longer be shop stewards, uh, come to union meetings. Basically, they strip us of all union interaction. Um, and I believe it was a two-year suspension. Or it, was a, it was a suspension of work. We couldn't work. Besides not representing the union, we couldn't work. Cool. It is what it is, you know. You uh, you 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 willing? You go the whole nine yards for something, and something you believe in. You're asked to be part of, um, and that that was just how it played out. Um, did those business agents, um, were they assaulted? They were stupid. They were disrespectful with their mouths. Whatever happened in that parking garage happened. Um, somebody did get hit with a phone windshields did get broken but they were tough guys they came there with the tough attitude and then they went home crying to mommy they know who they are Timmy Campbell you were one of the business agents you were a punk then you're a punk now I say for what it is my man you were a punk then you're a punk now they were all federal, uh, a lot of them were federal monitors, like I said in the previous uh, video, meaning that they were put in place by the federal government, meaning that they, ha they had to okay at the feds because there was so much corruption that had gone on in the union. Uh, long before I, full disclaimer, long before I even transferred into that local, I was with a different local. The only one that, oh, before I get into that, so me and Joey, now we're scrambling around, you know. We're still uh, 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 kind of laughing at the decision. We don't appeal it. There was people pissing in our ear. You could sue this guy for a conflict of interest. You got some case here, uh, labor, civil law. He didn't, we didn't, we, you know, honestly, we didn't sue people. We didn't, we didn't know nothing about that shit. Um, I never sued a person in my life until uh, I got hurt on a job. I wasn't even sued. It's, it's a workers' comp case. I blew my knee out. Um, so nobody sues people. I mean, that's where I grew up like that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but we, we weren't thinking that way. We were, actually, we were, we were thinking bad things. But anyway, um, me and Joe wind up uh, through a friend of a friend. We wind up working union on a union job. We just uh, got paid cash, benefits and all. Got paid a different way. That's all. And then about, oh, uh, Shortly after that, that that team that we were part of that uh, showed themselves to be um, not such good friends and, uh, you know, whatever, whatever word you could think of that would go into the mud category. Um, they proved themselves to be that. Um, they lost the election. And. Uh, I could give a shit less at that point either way, whether they lost the election, won the election, you know, whether they had a parade down Fifth Avenue for them or not, I cared less. Once you showed me, you know, who you were as a person, nothing I wanted to do with you. Um, I will say this. Again, we're outdoors. We're in the elements. Uh, I wanted to do it this way. I could sit in the studio and be nice and warm. But uh, I wanted to do it this way. So I'm sorry about the planes, but where I live, that's what you got here, LaGuardia Airport. So one of the guys from that crew who was the steward of that job, I won't say his name, he um, he kind of always cared, and he, he had a good heart. Uh, and he would reach out from time to time to me. Everything good, everything good, everything good. Yeah, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Um. So that that that's how that played out. Eventually, um, about three years down the road, four years down the road, I was pretty much going to be done with construction. I had other things going on. Um, I walked back into construction uh, due to uh, actually I did it. You know, uh, get back in the field. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, hey, I could put you over here. You know, I guess that time period had, it was four years, maybe three, four years after the fact. Um, I was never, I had no respect for the union anymore anyway, no matter who would have been in charge. So honestly, 
I had no respect for the uh, administration. So I didn't, I was never going to count on them to give me a job. I was never going to go to that union hall. I was never going to be cooperative in any way. I was not going to be a good soldier. That's full disclaimer, guys. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just telling you the truth. And neither would my friend Joe. He wouldn't be that way either. We lost all respect for whatever respect we had. The owner was a butt. He showed himself to be a garbage pail. He turned on us when we were defending him. The guy that asked us to represent his administration in the union takeover and also ran this big company, he showed his true colors. Uh, he showed his true colors by distancing himself from us. Whew. He, After this happened, he wanted nothing to do with us. Me. Meanwhile, you know, we were being team players for him. The steward was 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 okay. He he, you know, later on he uh he came around and tried to you know help when he could. Um, part of it was me not wanting any help, and then finally I uh went to a job about four years after that, and um, that's really the story of uh, how the international got involved, how they never proved nothing, how they never charges us with nothing um and how they tried to scare us into uh thinking that these big federal uh overseers of the union were gonna make us say that something happened or tell our sides of a story that's how they do it just like they do it in the street and this wasn't a street incident this is just the ugly side of what could happen when you oppose um the current administration and it's the ugly side of what happens when you're, you're, you believe in something and you're all in. You're asked and you're all in. But when the shit hits the fan and it has nothing to do with anything criminal, nobody's going to jail, and people will give you up just like that. Spit our names out. Owner sells us out. His benefit problem goes away. The union that's supposed to represent us sells us out. I, I was told they could have been sued for millions. I don't need their fucking millions. You know, wasn't, you know, nobody thinks. Suing was like, uh, the word sue was like not even in, in our vocabulary. So I'm not even even say i'm not saying that's good or bad i'm just saying that's a fact but that's uh the nuts and bolts of it um i could get probably into more and drag this out and and maybe make it a little bit more sexy but but this is the fact of what happened four years later we get back to work i wind up uh going on to greener pastures my friend joey winds up going on to greener pastures and uh but the other the other guys you know, they got to look at themselves in the mirror. One of them can. He can look at himself in the mirror somewhat. He knows what I'm talking about when I say somewhat, if he sees this. The other two, the owner and uh, the guy that ran the job, you know, can he look at himself in the mirror? I'm sure he can, but he shouldn't be able to because he showed who he was. He showed who he was. But I can rest assure you, we let everybody know on that job site what we thought of them before we left. And the owner, and him, and everybody else. Did it get us anywhere? No. But at least you let them know what you were thinking and who they were. That's the end of this one. I hope you like this uh, content. I hope you don't mind. I'm back out in the street doing it. I like to feel the cold, get the vibe, because when you're on a site, and that was a cold time of the year. Uh, I believe how when that played out. And um, I didn't feel like putting a hard hat on today. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you guys. Be well. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on Tommy Stiggs Live with Larry Roller and Jimmy DeMonica. Good people. Going to do a, uh, have a great conversation. And then uh, I'll have a, my own live coming up. And... Uh, I'll alternate back and forth with some union stuff, some street stuff, maybe some interviews sprinkled in here and there. But 
I look forward to tomorrow night, Tommy Steak Social Club with Larry and Jimmy. For now, goodbye and good luck. Be well. Love you guys. Be safe. Take care of your families. God bless.